Hello and welcome back to Bookish Today. I wanted to come to you with another book review. This time it's a book review of Nightwood by Juna Barnes, or as my pre-title for that, this review is, What the Hell Did I Just Read? Um, you know, every once in a while you come across a book and you think to yourself, what was that? Why did I read it? What did all that mean? Um, you know, in, in my life I've tried to occasionally read uh, challenging books. I've read Ulysses by Joyce. I really enjoy The Sound of the Fury by Faulkner. Uh, I've read uh, some Samuel Beckett, which can be challenging, uh, and I like to think that, uh, you know, I don't shy away from challenging reads, but I have to be honest with you, I wasn't ready uh, for the challenges presented by Nightwood. It really caught me off guard. I expected a straightforward novel, and that's not what I got. Nightwood is a work of modernist fi fiction uh, written in 1936, and it's kind of self-consciously uh, modernist. Uh, I think um, people like T.S. Eliot and Dylan Thomas and others have thought of it as something kind of a masterpiece. It is kind of a found also considered to be kind of a foundational work of modern uh, lesbian uh, literature. Um, the, its author, Juno Barnes, was a journalist. She made her name kind of as a shock journalist who kind of underwent stunts to draw attention to her work and to get her work published. At one point she had herself force-fed. Uh, this was during the time period in which Alice Paul, the women's rights activist, was being jailed and force-fed. So she had herself force-fed just so she could write about it. She did things like that uh, to draw attention to herself and to get her work published, and she was successful. She went to Paris in, I think, 1921. She fell in love with a woman in Paris, and the breakup of that love affair kind of forms the backbone of Nightwood, even though Nightwood was written uh, a decade and a half uh, after that breakup. The story of Nightwood is essentially the story of a character named uh, Robin Vogt, uh, and Robin Vogt is a woman who wanders and kind of goes from one relationship to another and destroys the lives, in a way, destroys the lives of several people. Now, by my reading, she destroys the lives of three people because those people tried to project what they needed onto her. Robin uh, marries a man uh, named Felix Volkbein, uh, and Felix Volkbein is essentially living out the life of his parents. Both of his parents died when he was uh, right around the time of his birth, and he is obviously looking for some kind of replacement, some kind of structure or grounding, some kind of meaning when he meets Robin, and he marries her, and she provides him with a child, but as soon as uh, she gives birth, uh, it is clear that she is not um, cut out for motherhood. Uh, she disappears, and she leaves him. Robin has a habit of wandering, uh, at night and staying gone for long periods of time and on one of her wanders she meets uh, with Nora Flood uh, and Nora Flood becomes her lover and she and Nora spend time together and for a brief period of time their love appears to be kind of an idyllic relationship but pretty soon it becomes clear that Nora wants something from that relationship that Robin can't give her and Robin returns to her nighttime uh, wanderings, and she spends a lot of time wandering almost like a crazy person through the streets of Paris and drinking and, you know, probably having relationships with other men and women. And this slowly begins to drive Nora crazy. Eventually, Robin meets another woman uh, named Ginny Petherbridge, and Ginny Petherbridge is a sad character who essentially. Uh, doesn't seem to have any meaning. She forms a desperate attachment to Robin that is truly almost completely based on jealousy and masochism uh, and anyone that Robin pays attention to other than her drives Jenny absolutely crazy. In the end, Robin will leave Paris and go back to uh, the United States of America with Jenny. And that's kind of where the story ends. I think probably the most important character in the story, though, is the one that's the hardest to describe. He's a called, referred to as the Doctor. His name is Matthew O'Connor. And he is, a to me, a, a real mysterious figure. And I'm not exactly sure who or what he represents. He seems to be an insomniac, insomniac moocher, uh, an alcoholic, 
uh, a doctor who lives in almost filth and poverty, a, a doctor who has practiced and has a vast knowledge of all kinds of things, and yet a doctor who spends his life with kind of the lower end of Paris society. He cross-dresses. It's possible that he believes himself to be a woman trapped in a man's body. Um, he appears to have characteristics of both uh, men and women. At times he seems like he's God. At, some, at times he seems like he's the devil. At times it seems like he's immortal. And mainly what the doctor does is he delivers these really long, almost prose poem style monologues on topics that are not always related uh, to what's going on in the book. Uh, and so he is to me a real mystery. And this book is to me uh, a bit of a mystery. If I had to pick books that it reminded me most of, I'd say there's some elements of Joyce here and, you know, kind of the obvious connection to Ulysses with characters uh, wandering the streets, with meeting with mysterious people, with having unusual experiences. There, There's some Joycean notes in Nightwood. I think that when I, while I was reading Nightwood, I was reminded of The Master and Margarita. Uh, uh, and in some passages, I was reminded of Naked Lunch uh, by... William Burroughs. Um, it is a it is a strange read. It is not an easy read. And as a result, once I figured out it was not a straightforward novel and it was going to be a difficult, confusing read, I did what I usually do in that situation. And that is I just read the novel through and I didn't try to spend time breaking down every sentence, every reference, or every allusion. Essentially what I do when I read when I've read difficult novels I just read it and try to let it wash over me and try to just pick up on kind of the spirit, the mood, the feeling of the novel itself. And then when, if I get to the end of the novel, if I find that those difficult novels were interesting enough or if they made a, enough of a positive impression on me, I just plan to go back and reread them. That's kind of what I do. And then on my second read through, I, I try to kind of figure more stuff out. Um, I find that it can be really frustrating to try to figure all that all that out on the first time through. So I wanted to give you some examples of the writing uh, in this book and to give you some idea of why I almost stopped like uh, just a few pages in. So here's the very first paragraph of Nightwood by Juna Barnes. Early in 1880, in spite of a well-founded suspicion as to the advisability of perpetuating that race which has the sanction of the Lord and the disapproval of the people, Hedwig Volkwein, a Viennese woman of great strength and military beauty, lying upon a canopy bed of a rich, spectacular crimson, the valent stamp of the bifurcated wings of the House of Habsburg, the feather coverlet, an envelope of satin on which in massive and tarnished gold threads stood the Volkwein arms, gave birth at the age of 45 to an only child, a son, seven days after her, after her physician predicted that she would be taken. Turning upon this field, which shook to the clatter of mourning horses in the street beyond, with the gross splendor of a general saluting her flag, she named him Felix, thrust him from her, and died. Okay, so that's kind of an avalanche of images and words. You know, I kind of forced my way through that first chapter, which was confusing and you know, really modernist in its use of language and its creation of images. And I thought when I got to the end of the first chapter, I thought, well, I'm not, I'm never going to make it through uh, this whole book. But I read the second chapter and there were elements in that part of the story. And I guess what I'm saying is when it got to strict storytelling that I thought were better and really uh, made the book uh, more worth reading. So I also wanted to read you a passage from the book that I thought was really pretty well done. So this is a scene uh, describing uh, meetings, meetings between uh, Robin Vogt and her third lover, uh, Jenny Petherbridge. Robin would walk in with the aggressive slide to the foot common to tall people, slurred in its accent by the hipless smoothness of her gait, her hands in her pockets, the trench coat with belt dangling, scowling and reluctant. Jenny leaning far over the table, Robin far back, her legs thrust under her to balance the whole backward incline of the body, and Jenny so far forward that she had to catch her small legs in the back rung of the chair, ankle out, toe in, not to pitch forward under the table. Thus they presented the two halves of a movement that had, that had as in sculpture, the beauty and absurdity of desire. 
So there are some really cool descriptions and really cool passages in there, but they're also kind of subsumed by long monologues from the doctor, which I wanted to read you an example of. This involves Jenny or Nora talking about a doll that Robin had given her at some point in their relationship. So here's that passage and the doctor just kind of riffing off of the doll thing. The love of that last doll was foreshadowed in the love of the first. The doll and the the doll and the immature have something right about them. The doll because it resembles but does not contain life, and the third sex because it contains life but resembles the doll. The blessed face. It should be seen only in profile, otherwise it is observed to be the conjunction of the identical cleaved halves of sexless misgiving. Their kingdom is without precedence. Why do you think I've spent near 50 years weeping over bars? but because I am one of them. You know, the doctor's monologues are just confusing. So, you know, we get down to the, the nub of the book, and I won't read you any more passages, and uh, I'll uh, look forward to anybody who's read it leaving me a comment. Is this a book that I'm going to think is worth rereading? Is this a good book? I would say that it's an interesting book. I think it contains some interesting ideas in writing. Is it a book that I think I'm going to reread? Maybe. Uh, I made it through the first time um, largely because I just wanted to see what was going to happen and where it was going to go and if I thought the author would regain her footing and I'm not sure she did. Anyway, there's my long, confusing, rambling and probably not very informative review of Nightwood by Juna Barnes. If you've read Nightwood, please let me know what you think and as always, I look forward to seeing your comments in the comments section below. Thank you for watching.